Hi everyone, my name is Lucian Unki and today we're back on the RTS video uh, series we're doing. So, in the last video we wrote this lovely bit of code here and that was to do with the movement. Um, now what we're going to do today is start on our script unit move script. Script unit move script. So anyway, um, we've set it up vaguely in the last video um, using link to this pretty much directly uh, so we've got var dx which is a destination x var dy which is a destination y and the speed that we're going to go at so we're going to use this as uh, a little bit of pseudocode we were on the last one and um, to start uh, this one so we're going to say var i equals zero we're going to go with a simple for loop to start with i is well actually we need xx and yy now if you didn't know x, uh, instead of x we're using xx because it's not a preset variable. Um, so xx is less than dx. Hmm. In fact we need to do some pre-checks for this. So we need to do var diff x equals dot x minus dx var diff y equals self dot y minus dy um, basically this will give us the difference that we need to go to so the amount of times we need to loop technically speaking um, so yeah we'll start at zero we'll then do this divided by speed and we'll say xx plus plus so let me just quickly explain what's going on here so the diff x is the difference between our object um, our unit in fact this needs to be object basic unit may change this later um, but for the moment we'll just, we'll just use that um, so we're taking the x that it's currently at, minusing the destination x, and then the same for that. Uh, I guess this won't work all the time, so what we really need to do is abs around that, which basically makes it absolute, uh, meaning if it's a minus it'll be a plus, and if it's a plus it'll still be a plus, so it'll always be a plus. Um, and then here we're looping through the amount of times dx divided by speed um, theoretically we shouldn't we should use div just to make sure but we, you know, we'll see how that goes um, so we're looping through the amount of times it takes to get to dx divided by speed because each time we're going to be adding speed anyway um, we need another loop practically identical to that so we're just going to copy it, um, and this time it's going to be yy, yy, uh, dy, and yy, and this can be exactly the same. We do actually need diff x there, there and diff y, so that's what we set up there. So this will then loop through uh, the amount of times we need to get to that destination. It's a bit confusing, but let's then uh, say object with object basic unit. So with our unit, we're then going to say x plus equals speed. Actually, we need two separate for loops for this. I just suddenly thought. Um, so we need one for the y and one for the x, uh, separate, not together. Because if you have them together, you will loop through them both. That kind of. Um, so you loop through. The you loop through all the x's and then all the y's, all in one uh, nested for loop. So I mean. Theoretically, this won't work. Um, I'll just show you why. So what we've done is we've got the both for loops separate. Um, so f four, and then with the basic unit, 
we're then adding the speed each time. Um, this will work in some situations, fingers crossed. Uh, so yeah, you can see there it did work. You know, there it did work. As soon as we want to go back though, it won't work. Um, so then for this, we need to make another variable. So we need to make x pos. Um, that's not really a great name for it, but basically we're saying is it positive or is it negative. Um, I'm trying to remember what the function is for this. There is one and it does exist. Um, and the hell's broken. Uh, for the moment we'll just say well, pause equal. Uh, we'll make a little if for the moment. Um, so is it if object basic unit dot x is bigger than d x var x pos equals true, else var x pos equals false. Um, now effectively what that's doing is oh, just copy quickly uh, effectively what that is doing is it's saying if our current x is bigger than our destination x then it's positive otherwise it's negative and I might have got the wrong way around I'm not sure but then what you want to do is you want to say here we need another if so if x positive then we need to add else we want to subtract um, now at the moment this looks very complicated for what could be incredibly easy um, purely because uh, at the moment it moves instantaneously it moves oh, little typo there that's going to be y pos so at the moment it could, even though it's in a for loop it moves practically instantly um, but what we can do later on is have some pauses in between each one which will mean that it moves smoother so if we run this now we've probably got them the wrong way around so let's try swapping them around and hopefully this should work <laughs> I think our Y one's the wrong way around Oh, we've got a typo. That's the other alternative. Ah, yes, we do have a typo. Hang on. Yeah. You can see there we've got y plus speed. That's meant to be minus speed. Let's run that. So just check, check if it doesn't work exactly how you expect it to. Check for typos. And uh, that is meant to be that way around. Okay, there you go, it's working exactly the same as it would, was before, but now I've got it in a script. Uh, and it's a lot bigger, to be honest. Um, and uh, we will be working to make that a little bit nicer, but we can get rid of the pseudocode for the moment. Um, but this is now a script, which makes our movement work a little bit different. Um, so, I mean, eventually what we'll do is we'll run this bit here in a timer so we'll say if alarm 0 equals minus 1 then we're going to do this and then at the very end of it just a and outside of the width we're going to say alarm 0 equals and we'll just, we'll just set it to 10 Okay, I'm going to copy this exactly the same for this, but we're going to make it alarm 1 because we need a different alarm for if we're doing a different movement. So we're moving in this case, in the first case we we're moving via the X, in this case we're moving via Y. It's quite important that we mm, use different ones for that. We also though need to actually create these. 
so alarm zero and alarm one and now if we run that we should hopefully see that they're a little bit more a little bit slower maybe possibly too slow um, or possibly of course they're just not working the alarm switch does occasionally happen let's change it to one and just see if that works otherwise we might have to make our own alarms which is possible um, so let's see yeah I think we're gonna have to make our own alarms up I don't think those are working um, but don't anyway, know. Yeah, we wrote this little script up. It's pretty nice and uh, neat, I'd say. Uh, this bit could do with a bit of optimizing, and the alarms obviously need sorting. But for the moment, I think that'll do. Um, if you like the video, remember to like, subscribe. I always do what you want to do, and I will talk to you in the next one.